jasmine, oolong, green, and white. Long ago, these four teas were skillfully brewed at the Blissful Brew. Then, everything changed when the shop's popularity threatened its existence. All Mr. Okoron, the shop's owner and tea master, could do was to recruit four teenage orphans to learn his trade and staff his shop. A year has passed since the orphans were hired, and although their skills have progressed, they still have a lot to learn before they can brew anything. But I believe that they have the potential to make the Blissful Brew the greatest tea shop in the world. Imagine, if you will, a story, but not the usual story, which steps in through your front door, but rather through the back door. I'm talking about a back story. But back doors won't be the only doors discussed in today's episode. No, not today. We will be looking into the story of Bill Door, an unsuspecting child living a seemingly normal life in the Fire Nation. Unsuspecting of what, you may ask? Unsuspecting that he is about to enter the prequel zone. You've experienced quite the dream, my child. Are you all right? Um, yeah, I'm fine. I have some tasty lavender chamomile tea for you, if if you'd like. Could add a little warm milk, mix it in. Should help you get a peaceful sleep. If if you want. No thanks. I, I'm not really a fan of tea. <laughs> not a fan of tea. Shh. Oh. <clears throat> Apologies. I. I think I could be friends with someone who doesn't like tea. I mean, that's fine. I'm not really on this ship to make friends anyways. <laughs> well, I was kidding, but uh, I tell you what. Uh, you take your chances with my tea, and I'll take my chances with being your friend. What do you say? I mean, sure, I don't see why not. I don't have anything else better to do. But don't think you'll get me to start liking your tea. I'm all for learning how to make it, but actually liking the stuff? Well, that's a different story. Hmm... <sighs> <laughs> All right, fine. That that works for me. You get some rest, my child. Welcome. How can I help you? The name is General Wang Long. Are you Jasper Burtney? That's me. Oh, and this is my son, Ash. He's just stopping in to hand off my lunch I forgot from home. <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? I hear you're quite the engineer. Well, I do what I can. <laughs> what can I do for you, General? I'm in need of a weapon. Okay. What kind of weapon? That's what I'm not sure about yet. Something big. Something powerful. Is there something specific that the Fire Nation needs it for? A specific purpose? Yes. I'm trying to take out an Earth Nation village with it. So it needs to be able to withstand and bust through rocks, dirt, that sort of thing. Wait a second. An Earth Nation village? I'm confused. Are we at war? War? No. Not currently. Just need to test out the Fire Nation's capabilities. Determine how capable we are, should we need, to go to war in the near future. And you want to do that by testing out a war machine of my design on an Earth Kingdom village? That is correct. Why do you make it sound like that's a problem? That's a, a war crime! You must be joking, right? Th this can't possibly be sanctioned by the Fire Nation military! I beg your pardon, Jasper, but I am a representative of the Fire Nation army. Consider my orders as if they are coming straight from the lips of the Fire Lord himself. Now, can you make me my weapon or not? Whether I can or can't is irrelevant. Because I won't. I won't allow my designs to be used in the prospect of attacking the lives of the innocent. Now, if you don't mind, General, I have a lot of work to do. If you need me to get the door for you, I can. But otherwise, it's behind you, if you would be so kind. <sighs> this is not the end of this discussion. I believe it is. Good day, sir. <sighs> Dad? 
Dad, is everything okay? I'm not sure, son. I've heard others speak of similar things that have me concerned about the priorities of our Fire Lord. In school they said we should never question the Fire Lord. I know they do, son. But just remember that sometimes what society deems correct isn't always so. It's important that you always remember to think for yourself and think critically. Never take things at face value. And of course, always stick up for what's right, no matter what. Protect the innocent. Guard those who are weaker than yourself. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand, Dad. Good boy. Now head on back home. Your mother is probably wondering where you got off to. Oh, yes, sir. Well, well, well. It looks like you managed to get a good night's sleep after all. No more nightmares? No, and you're kind of creepy. Did, did you watch me while I was sleeping or something? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, but I did grab you breakfast before it was all gone, since I knew someone decided to sleep in. Oh, thanks, I, I guess. So, uh, uh... My name is Miss, Mr. Okaron, or at least that's what they call me. <laughs> What's yours? Oh, um... Uh... Rope. Your name is Rope? Wait, no, no, it's, it's, it's Door. It's a Door. Door? All right. Is that your first or last? Um, last. It's last. Oh. <laughs> well, thank goodness. <laughs> What's your first? Uh, first. What are normal first names? Normal first names? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, Tao, Pima, Akoda, Yuka, Bill. Oh, Bill. Yeah, it's Bill. It's Bill. Y your name is Bill. Bill Dor? That's right. Well, nice to meet you, Bill Dor. What do you mean we're behind schedule? I have direct orders from the Fire Lord himself. If they are not followed to the letter, there will be hell to pay, and it will be paid with your head. Oh, crap. What's wrong, my boy? Nothing, I just... Uh... <sighs> Damned captain has no idea how to sail a ship. Unforeseen delays my rear. Hey, boy, come here a moment. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. What, what do you, what, what do you need? Take off your headband. I want a better look at you. I'd rather not, sir. I am a general in the Fire Lord's army. You will do as I say, and you will look me in the eye when I speak to you. Well, uh, you, you see, I got a, I got a really bad haircut, sir, and I'd rather not no one see it, and I, I'm awfully embarrassed about it. Come here. Uh, huh. There. Hmm. Yes. You look very familiar. I'm sure I know you from somewhere. Uh, uh, you, you must be mistaken, sir. I, I don't know you. I've never seen you before, so how could I, how could you possibly recognize me? Hmm. Ah, General, uh, you found my grandson. I've been looking all over the ship for him. Uh, there you are, Bill. <laughs> Come help me finish prepping the tea. Uh, just because we haven't opened our tea shop yet doesn't mean that we can't get some customers as we travel. This your boy? Uh, my grandson, yes. You two run some kind of tea shop, eh? Oh, that's right. Oh, rather, we will be opening it soon. <laughs> We're uh, headed for Gaoling now. Uh, I'm still thinking of a name, but I'm leaning towards the Blissful Brew. Ha! Huh. Gaoling. That's in Earth Kingdom Village, yeah? Uh, yes, sir. I'll give you a piece of advice, old man. You'd be better off heading back to the Fire Nation and opening up a hot leaf juice franchise. Not much stake in starting a business in the Earth Kingdom, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, well, uh, it's funny you should say that. I actually just quit working for Hot Leaf Juice. <laughs> that was a foolish decision, old man. Hot Leaf Juice is the best damn tea in all the land. But hey, it's your life to throw away. Well, I'll keep that in mind. I appreciate the advice, General. Have a nice day. Hey, boy. Uh, yeah? What's the best tea you and your grandpa make? Uh, uh mint. Mint? Uh, uh, mango. Hmm. 
yeah. Mint mango. Yeah. Hmm. Mmm. Mint mango. I've never thought of that combination, but uh, could be worth a try. We could make it the special back at the tea shop. <sighs> yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know what to do, Margaret. I don't understand how he can do this. It's your factory. You don't have to make them what they want. I, I know. <laughs> but he's a general. And these days, that means a lot more than it used to. I just don't understand. There hasn't been a war with the Earth Kingdom in years. The Fire Lord hasn't even announced there has been any sort of incident. It's an unprovoked attack. For what reason, I can't imagine, but, but my factory and I will have no part of it. I'm proud of you, love. Standing up for your principles? Well, someone has to. I've made things for the Earth Kingdom. They've always been good customers, and they're good people. I won't be a part of needless violence against them. <gasps> they sent soldiers to my house? What could they want? I'm not sure. But it can't be good. You're going out there? I must. Jasper! Grab her too. Stop! What is the meaning of this? Leave my family alone! I'm afraid we're far past that. You see, as I had mentioned earlier, I am on orders from the Fire Lord himself to procure weapons in order to successfully take over an Earth Kingdom settlement and turn it into a prison camp as part of a great conquest plan the Fire Lord has in place. Now, I'm not going to be the one to upset the Fire Lord when he finds out that one of the best engineers in the Fire Nation won't make him what he wants. So, I give you the opportunity to make this easy on me and on yourself. Agree to begin design and manufacturing of the weapons I want, or I will be forced to take drastic measures. <laughs> I will not make your weapons so you can attack the innocent! I will not stand for unnecessary violence! <sighs> that is quite unfortunate. Then, I must do this the hard way. Uh, uh, Leave no! her alone! Stop! Oh... Uh, but you're doing no, this to her, stop. not me. Enough no, of this! Stop. This is between you and me, not her! If you have a problem with me, then we will deal with it! What? You want an Agni Kai? Ha! Huh. My sources tell me that you're not even a firebender. It would be a pointless endeavor. No, I like my way much better. So here's how this will work. I won't! harm you or your family if you simply do as I ask and allow us to make use of your skills and factory to make what we want. Deal? Uh. That doesn't sound like a yes. Your wife is quite beautiful. It would be most unfortunate if her beauty was tainted by a burn scar. No! Stop! Uh. You're a monster! Like I said, you're the one doing this to her, not me. I've made a very generous offer. I'll even throw in a little extra. Agree to my terms, and I won't send another soldier into your house to rip your children from their beds and teach them not to play with fire. You've already lost one son to the flames, have you not? Shall we make it another? Fine! I'll design your damned war machines! Just leave my family alone! See? I knew he was a reasonable man. I expect to see the designs completed in two months, and a first prototype in three months after that. I know your team works fast, and I expect that same speed, as I will be heading out after I get this. The settlement we have in mind should be the perfect opportunity to see how capable your machine is. It's a fairly small village after all. Even if your weapon is a flop, it won't take much for us to overcome the farmers that live there. <laughs> Uh, 
You know, uh, I'm not trying to get all up in your business or anything, but uh, I couldn't help but notice that uh, the general sure seemed to recognize you. Well, whether he was about to or not doesn't matter. We tricked him. That may be true, but uh, I fear that he still seemed a bit suspicious. He might not be as fooled as we hoped. Well, I'll, I'll figure that out if it comes to that. Well, if I might be so bold as to ask, why does he recognize you? Why are you so interested? Well, I figure that <laughs> now that you're my grandson, <laughs> it sure would be nice to have a bit of honesty between us. All right, yeah, there. My real name isn't actually Bill. Oh, oh well, I figured that much out already. What? How? Well, firstly, neither Bill nor Dor names I've ever heard attached to anyone I've ever met in the Fire Nation, and I grew up there. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. And secondly, the combination is one of the worst fake name attempts I have ever heard of. Okay. That bad, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> the worst one was Pippin Padalopsicopolis, but uh, we can keep your Bill Door disguise going. I greatly appreciate that. So the general, uh, he's not looking for you, is he? Mm, no, he's not looking for me. It's just purely coincidence. He's about half the reason why I ran away. Ran away, you say? What's the other reason? I don't really want to talk about that. Oh, of course. No pressure. Your life is your own. I'm simply an old man trying to help. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I've been meaning to ask you. Ask away. Well, given that the general is on this ship with us, and like you said, he's, he seems to be suspicious of me, and it's not like I'm really doing anything anyways, just on this boat here. Oh, you want to work with me and maintain your cover, so he doesn't catch on to your identity? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was meaning, if, if that's all right. Oh, <laughs> Bill, my boy, I, w I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, if you're going to be my grandson, I'm going to have to teach you how to make tea. Hey, I brought you your uh, lunch again today, Father. Very good, son. Now run along home. The factory isn't safe for you anymore. Not with all these soldiers around these days. Uh, Dad? Yes, son? You don't want to design these weapons, do you? <sighs> no, son. I, I don't. They will only bring harm to those they're used against. Then why are you doing it? I thought you said to always stick up for what's right and never back down, no matter what. I know, son. But sometimes you're put into a position where there are two right decisions, but each have a bad outcome. And there's not much you can do but pick the one that has the closest impact to you. And in my case, I chose to protect my family. Because that's all I have control over. Are you saying that if, if it wasn't for me, and Mom, and my brother, you wouldn't be able to stop making these machines? It's not that simple, son. And don't blame yourself, or anyone in our family. This is a choice I had to make for me. And General Long is the one choosing to bring harm to others. Well, well, well. Mr. Burtney. I just got back from the testing range. And I have to say, you are absolutely the designer they say you are. Those machines pack quite the punch. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm glad you're satisfied with the product. Will you be on your way so that my factory can go back to the manufacturing we are quite behind on now? Whereas, I will be heading out for the Earth Kingdom. Unfortunately, your factory will need to continue manufacturing more of my weapons. What? That wasn't part of the deal? Well, that's just the thing. I had sent word to the Fire Lord that your machines were functioning up to, if not above, expectations and he insisted that he have more made for each battalion. Learn to take a compliment, my friend. This is my factory and I will make no more of your machines! You can take the designs elsewhere and have another factory work on them for you, if you like them so much. That would slow production down by months. No, we will continue here until further notice, and you will continue making them. That. Or must I pay your family another visit? Hmm? Fine. Good. 
I'll be heading out, but I'll be sure to check on the progress once I've conquered the Earth Kingdom village and finished building up the prison camp there. I'll be sure to have any passing generals stop in and experience the capabilities of your machines in the meantime. I'm sure they'll be quite eager to include one of them under their own command. <laughs> need to go home, Bill. It's not safe here. Yes. Yes, sir. Last call for all passengers heading to the Earth Kingdom. Let's see. I've got the money, the new clothes, some food from the market. I don't think I forgot anything. It'll be a couple days before they realize I've left the island, and by then it's too late. There'll be one less thing forcing Dad to do the wrong thing. You got your ticket, boy? Uh, yes, sir. Oh. Right here. No adults with you, lad? Um, no, I'm off to stay with my mother. Uh, she's an Earth Kingdom noblewoman. Oh. And where's your father, eh? Well, after mother got caught, uh, him with a young nomad woman, she divorced him and... Oh, uh, and then... that's plenty of details for me. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I asked. The sleeping quarters are in mid-deck, and breakfast is at 6 a.m. sharp every morning. You're welcome on the main deck any time, and especially so if you start to get seasick. Welcome aboard the wave break. All are aboard! Crew, lift the anchors! We're off to the sandy shores of the Earth Kingdom. Bill! Bill! Wake up! Something is happening on the deck. I, I think we're being boarded. Um, boarded? Um, what do you mean? Pirates! <laughs> Alright everyone, up. Hand over your valuables. Please, sir, this is a passenger ship. We, we have nothing of value. You shut your mouth, old man. My sources have assured me there's something valuable on this ship that's being transported. <sighs> the weapon. What was that, boy? Uh, nothing. He's hiding something. Men, get over here. Grab these crates here. Oh, wait. No, please. Those are my tea ingredients. Oh, yeah. Any of them rare? Incredibly so. Perfect. No, please, stop. You could damage them. I need them for when I get to Gaoling. What is the meaning of this? I don't take kindly to pirates. Especially when they're on my ship. Your ship? I thought this was a passenger ship. Let's just say the Fire Nation army is making use of it to remain incognito. Oh, we didn't sign up for soldiers. I figured as much. Don't move, Abasso. What do you think you're doing? You wouldn't want me to hurt these innocent passengers now, would ya? I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Okay, okay, but uh, what if this whole ship went down? What? are you talking about? Aye, well, if this is simply just a passenger ship, then I doubt you have any sort of weapons on it. My ship, on the other hand, is well armed with cannons ready to fire. Try anything, and I'll give the order to shoot. All right. So it seems we have a standoff. What do you want? Oh, our sources told us that this ship is transporting something incredibly valuable. I see. And who is this source? Oh, I'm not telling you. Let's make a deal then. My soldiers and I will let you leave completely unharmed, and with whatever supplies you can carry in one trip. In addition, I will give you this. All you have to do is tell me the name of your informant and where I can find them, and we'll just pretend like this whole ordeal was just a misunderstanding. Hmm. All right. Deal. But we're taking the boy as well. If anyone tries anything in the meantime, I'll just feel a whole lot better having a hostage with me. Wait, no! Quiet, old man. Agreed. All right, you bunch of salty sea dogs. Grab a crate of loot and let's get out of here. His name is Cheng Sanani. He's the owner of a traveling carnival. We came across them as we were leaving the Western Air Temple. He said they had just come from the Fire Nation and saw a production factory producing some kind of special new machines, and that one of the prototypes was being loaded onto the ship. I see. And did he say where he was taking his carnival next? Hmm. 
I believe he said they were sailing for Senlin Village now. Senlin Village, you say? How perfect. This gold has been well earned, my friend. May the ocean waves be in your favor as you travel from here. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Have a nice day. All right, men. Let's go back on the ship. Please, sir. You must take me with you. What kind of operation do you think I'm running? No, I'm no passenger ship. But, sir, the boy, he's my grandson. And I'll be sure to train him up into a fine member of me crew. Well, then let me join your crew as well, sir. What? We don't have much need for fat old men on my ship. I'm a master of tea making. <laughs> a master, you say? Well, there's no prize awarded for humility, I suppose. I tell you what, I've been having some pretty nasty nightmares lately that have been keeping me up. You come along and make me a part of your best nightmare deterrent tea, and if I get a full night's sleep tonight, you can stick around. If not, <laughs> well, then I throw you overboard. <sighs> that sounds like a fair deal to me. And with that find yourself being hauled aboard the pirate ship as the crew tosses their loot onto the deck, releases the ropes from the passenger ship you were just on, and sails into the night. So, Bill, Cameron, as Bill, you find yourself uh, on board a pirate ship, you and Mr. Okoran both. They've just stolen a bunch of his uh, rare tea ingredients, crates of them, uh, so those are on there with you. They're currently uh, putting those off to the side, kind of where they keep uh, a handful of other, you know, boxes of who knows what kind of stuff they've looted or supplies or whatever the case. Um, you and Mr. Okran are standing there on the front deck. Uh, the pirates are all, you know, fairly well armed with swords and um, other potential weapons. Uh, definitely not a situation where you feel like if you tried something, it'd be tough to get away with it potentially. So, mm -hmm. what would you like to do? Um, are they directing us anywhere? Um, as it currently stands, you have one big guy just kind of standing there next to you. Uh, they don't have you tied up, though. Uh, again, the, you know, they have their weapons out. They assume that you're smart enough to know don't try to run. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I guess I would just follow them and see where they lead me I figure they're probably going to take me to like wherever they keep hostages I don't know sure sure um, yeah so after a couple minutes of standing there waiting as you know kind of the crew gets everything together uh, the captain actually runs over when you first got on the captain ran over to the kind of main uh, the steering of the ship and was basically just, you know, he looked a little nervous in the sense that uh, he wanted to make sure that you guys were well away before he decided to come and, and deal with you guys, essentially. He didn't want to be able to see the ship that you were just on because he was worried, you know, what if Wang Long tried something or whatever the case. He's out of... So as you guys are waiting, you eventually get out of sight of that ship. <laughs> and um, he, he comes and he approaches you and he says, well, well, well. Two new members of the crew. <laughs> well, what should I do with you, eh? And Mr. Okoran says, Uh, well, uh, I could, uh, start getting that tea ready for you if you show me to the kitchen or whatever it is that you usually prep any meals in. He says, Ah, yes, you can head down to the next deck and you'll meet Cookie. He's the one, he's our chef down there and... He can get you all set up for whatever you need. I expect that tea in my hands in, ooh, let's see, the next 20 minutes or so. You should have a pot of boiling water ready for you, so that's one step you don't need to deal with. And Mr. Okoran turns to you and he says, Well, Bill, I suppose we better do what he says. Mm, I guess so. Do I have to go there? Oh, if you want to go to your room, I can show you to your room instead. Oh, I get a room? Yes, the two of you will be bunking together. Huh. Cool. Uh. Well, so as long as he can follow through with his promise. Otherwise, it might be a room just for you, my lad. Oh, because you're gonna... Wait, what? Well, if Mr... What did you say your name was? Uh, Okoran? Well, if Mr. Okoran here can't help hold his promise and help me get a good night's sleep... Well, <laughs> I'll be sending him to be feasted on by the bull sharks. Oh. Well, uh, 
And uh, Bill turns to look at Mr. Oker and says, Well, you better uh, make a mean tea, or else you'll be in big trouble. Oh, I've helped people before with with calming, soothing teas to help with a good night's sleep. Uh, I'm not worried about my skills. Uh, if, if you just need to rest, that's fine with me, Bill. Oh, so wait. There's teas that help with, like, sleeping? Sure. There's teas that help with a lot of things. Huh. I may have to try one of those someday. Oh, sure. Are you having trouble sleeping, Bill? Well, sure, but I don't think now's the time to talk about that. We're kind of... Oh, well, I I tell you what. I mean, I usually make things in bulk, so I I could bring you a cup of tea, uh, if that's all right with you, Captain. Sure. It makes me feel a little better that... You know, you wouldn't try poisoning the boy with the same tea you try poisoning me with. (laughs) I mean, I'm his grandson, after all. You won't just try it. You'll give me the good stuff, so... Oh, I would hope so. (laughs) I'd be a little bit concerned of your family dynamics if uh, he tried to poison you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. Follow me, boy. And uh, you, Mr. Ogran, like I said, next deck below, you'll find Cookie. You'll find the kitchen. Get to work. Well, I'm, I'm no help in the kitchen, though. But I wasn't... No, I just mean Mr. Okarat. Oh, okay. You can come with me and I'll show you to your room. Oh, okay, sick. Yeah. Yeah, that works. And uh, so he takes you and uh, so basically on the sort of second... Or, yeah, second deck front end of the ship. I don't know the terms of, you know, the four sections of the ship. There's a poop deck and there's the steer. And and the the starboard. and and Yeah, all that stuff. I don't know ship terminology. Maybe I should have studied up on it beforehand. But whatever the case, so in the front most portion of the ship that's where the uh, the crew sleeps um it's also where you have the the sort of portcullises that open up for the cannons and things like yeah. that i think that's the correct term um so basically their thinking is you know if if things were to happen and they needed people to be on the cannons like asap they're right be, there they'd be right there yeah. so and it would wake everybody up too uh-huh. so that <laughs> would that's right uh in the back section on the other hand that's where they've got like the kitchen and everything else so mr okaron follows you guys down the steps into the the uh second deck or whatever he goes one way you guys go the other way uh the captain he leads you over he opens up a door um into a room it's a it's i mean it's a pretty crammed room uh, and you kind of assumed as much you know you've been in obviously you were just in the other ship and it was pretty crammed space yeah. um just more because of the amount of people that were there this one's more crammed because the space is limited but yeah. you know they give basically it's like two to a room it's like a dormitory maybe a little bit smaller than that than yeah. a college dormitory so um yeah, it's and it's quaint. So yeah. he says, "All right, there you go. There's your room. Have yourself a good night's sleep. But I expect you up and at him in the morning, at the break of dawn, helping out with the ship." Oh yeah, sure. All right. Sorry. Do you have any prior experience with boats, my boy? Yeah. Well, yeah. good. Yeah, I used to work on a boat back in the day. Uh, well, not really. It was a family boat. Uh. All they did, had me do was mop. <laughs> well, perfect. Then I guess I know exactly what to have you do here. Oh, perfect. I'm good at that. There you go. I like the spirit. But I better see you in the morning. I mean, I'm... Or I'm, I'll be pretty dang upset not, if I have to come wake you up myself. Oh, uh, no, I usually wake up pretty early. I thought you were me. I was going to jump off. And I'm like, I'm not that good at swimming. Oh, no, I'm not too worried. <laughs> There's... It's going to be quite some time before we even reach land. Where are we going anyways? A small island right off the coast of the Earth Kingdom. It's, uh, well, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but it's a little hideout as pirates use. Also, it's close by the, not too far from the port, where we usually do a lot of the trade and from what we steal and loot. Oh. That's you like stealing and looting, don't you, boy? Well, as much as any pirate. Ah, yes, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. All right, you get some sleep, lad. You've had a long day. Get kidnapped and all. <laughs> he says as he closes the door behind him. <laughs> and there you go. You're uh, you're at your room on your own, yeah. chilling. And just like that, I have another uh, one of my uh, characters I've played RPGs as. That is a fi- pirate. Yeah. Just like that. You've got another pirate now. <laughs> another pirate character. <laughs> You've solidified the pirate title. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess I would just... Is it late at night? Yeah, I'd say it's probably... I mean, you were sleeping when you guys got boarded, so so I mean, yeah, it's probably pretty, if not early in the morning, honestly. I mean, I would go to... I would lay down. 
I mean, I was just in the middle of sleeping. This probably whole situation's probably been like 30 minutes. Yeah. So I'm probably still tired. Oh, yeah. So I'll just go to bed. Okay. All right. Um, as you fall asleep and, you know, maybe 30 minutes or so in, you uh, you hear the door to your room open. I don't know if it necessarily would awaken you or not. Uh, I don't know how deep or, or light of a sleeper that Bill is. <clears throat> About middle. So About if middle? It's, if it's okay. quiet, he won't hear it. I would say uh, it's just enough noise to kind of, like, pull you out of whatever cycle of your, your REM that oh. you're in. And, and you can, I mean, you're still, like, you know, you got your eyes closed, and, like, it would take you a half a second to just drop back into sleep. But basically, you just hear Mr. Oberon come in. Um, you hear him set something down on the, there's, like, a dresser next to your bed. Mm-hmm. You, you hear him set it down there. It clinks, so you assume it might be, like, a... a cup of tea and like a little saucer or something um and then you just hear him uh uh you know kind of some rough rustling of cloth as he like changes into something else or um just gets into bed and gets under the covers and he too goes to sleep <clears throat> on his own bed <laughs> 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 on his own cot or yeah, whatever they have that's so what i figured so anyway uh yeah and then otherwise you uh you wake up the next morning and uh Mr. Ogaran is still snoozing, but it's, you know, it's pretty early. Or at least you assume. You know, you can't Mm -hmm. really see because you're inside of the ship. Yeah. Uh, Well, I would almost argue, uh, you open up the door, and one of the, you know, they keep the portcullises open, and because the the waves weren't super heavy, so obviously water wouldn't have been splashing around inside of the, through the windows. And, yeah, there's uh, just like a a very orange light kind of starting to come in, so you know that it's about dawn. And uh, you look back, you see that, yes, indeed, he did bring you, you know, a cup of tea uh, last night. But by this point, it's probably le- reached lukewarm temperatures. So, um, but otherwise, yeah, it's uh, it's done. All right. Uh, Bill swings his feet around and off the bed. And he's just sitting there waking up. And he, got, he's, he's, he starts just kind of talking to himself under his breath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh looks like they didn't kick the old man off anyway out of there all <laughs> guess the tea must have been good enough to well not have him sleeping with the fishes and bill leans over at the cup and he like sniffs it what's it smell like um i'm trying to think do you, i mean do you think bill has ever smelled like at least lavender before yeah okay so it definitely has like a nice lavender scent to it with something else that you're not entirely sure mm-hmm. um just because it's a, it's something that's probably very tea oriented and since you're not somebody that likes tea it wouldn't have necessarily caught his nose it just catches familiar. lavender sure lavender. definitely lavender uh he picks up the cup and he just takes the, the sip. Okay, okay. Um, like I said, it's reached lukewarm, so it's not like it's not hot or cold tea, which is normally the two types of tea that a yeah. person would drink. Um, but it's it's pleasant, you know. It's pleasant. It's it's very peaceful feeling, you know. I'm not gonna say that like you get over washed with a sense of, you know, just peace and and soothingness or whatever. But you know, it's it's a little bit relaxing. And but does it taste like tea? Yeah. <laughs> and Jeez. as you do that, uh, uh, Mr. Okaron, you know, kind of jolts awake and he says, <coughs> I hear someone spitting out tea. <coughs> oh, Bill, you're awake. Yeah. Oh, this tea really woke me up. Oh, I tell you what, I had not got enough sleep, mate. My eight hours is really thrown off. Uh, do you know what time it is? Best guess around seven. Seven. I usually always just wake up around then. Oh, okay. So probably about you know dawn. I suppose it's about time I wake to get up, up when the sun comes up. Yep. Yep. Oh, well, I suppose we might as well get at it. Uh, oh, did, were you tasting the tea? Yeah. Well, what did you think? It tastes like tea. Wasn't, okay. Wasn't fond of that's it. That's a that's a very broad statement, Bill. I just don't like the flavor of tea. All right. But but it did okay. feel it did feel a little I don't know soothing. Yeah. So maybe if I'm having a bad dream or something, I could drink that. I'd probably choke it down. But I mean, <laughs> if it helps give you peace, then I'd be it'd be like you know like taking medicine. You know, sometimes they taste a little bad, but like it helps. Okay. You know. I don't know if you have this. I don't, I don't. No, absolutely, yes. I've uh, I, I've used it myself. I when I ever got sick, my mom would bring me, like, this weird, like, soup thing. It was, like, bubbling, and oh. it tasted funky. And so, like, I would drink it. It tasted awful. Oh. I'd have to hold my nose and everything, but, like, 
believe it or not, next day I felt right as rain. What? Brand new, Bill, you know? So. It's amazing the things that a, a good hot liquid can do, or, you know, soup, or whatever the case is. Yeah, whatever There's magical soup, or in this right. case, your magical tea that keeps you on this ship can oh. do to a man. Well, I, I, I would say there's no magic in it, Bill, but you know, tea is, is a mysterious thing. And I've spent my whole life learning it, and I have to say, there, there might just be some sort of a magic to tea. I truly think so. Is it because your secret ingredients love? It very well, very well might be, Bill. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell everyone and ruin your secret ingredient. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's all right. <laughs> well, uh, like I said, I, I suppose we better get moving uh, before the captain wakes up and gets mad at us. Uh, I don't know what they've got planned for us. Uh, but, well, uh, I'm going to be swabbing the deck. Oh, okay. I don't know what they're going to do. Probably have you make tea all day. <laughs> that sounds fine to me. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, Bill, uh, I, uh, I hope you feel the same way that I do, and that, uh, we, we probably can't stick around on this, uh, crew. If, yeah. If, uh, the opportunity arises, I well, think we should... I think I have a plan. Okay. Uh, so, while we were talking, you were gone. I mm -hmm. talked to the, the captain okay. by ourselves, right? And he started talking, I asked him where we were going, and he said we're going to, like, a pirate hideout. Mm. Right out, it's like on an island right outside... The Earth Village, Earth Kingdom. Oh, okay. And so I was thinking, well, since we wanted to both get to the Earth Kingdom, mm -hmm. we could just stay with these pirates till they get to the hideout, and then I don't know, maybe make a break for it. Then find out if we're at the pirate hideout, there's probably going to be smaller boats or something, mm -hmm. and we just get our way to the mainland. Yeah. He said it was close enough that they could go to a close dock. Oh, do okay. trading on the mainland. So sure. that's my plan. Okay. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Yeah, so I until then, good we thinking. just. You know, bide our time, I guess. Make sure. friends with the pirates. Build, make them think we're not trying to run, so that uh, if we do run, you know, they won't expect it as much. Sure. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan to me. All right. Well, let's get to it then. Yeah. All right. Uh, you just find me probably in the kitchen, and if you need anything. No. Yeah, I'll probably be in there. You know, getting my food. All right. Sounds good. And uh, with that, you guys both kind of split up, and uh, Mr. Okaron heads back over to the kitchen, assuming that's where they want him, and then you head up to the top of the deck to await further orders. Um, so as you arrive up there, uh, you see the rest of the crew all seems to be kind of gathered around, and they're all whispering amongst themselves. It seems like something might be off. And uh, as you approach them, you start to hear uh, some of what they're whispering about. And they're like, I don't know where he is. Uh, he's, uh, he's, I mean, he's always out here. He's never late. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's very punctual. And so I don't know what it is that he, uh, why he wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'm laughing because a pirate just used the word punctual. punctual. <laughs> oh, yes, he's very punctual. I was like, what kind of pirates am I surrounded by? Well, you know, we played, uh, we played, uh, what's that, what's that pirate game we've played, like, a few times with? Oh, uh, Forgotten Waters. Forgotten Waters, yeah. There's, there's all types of pirates, true. you there's know? The, there's the spoken pirate. There is, you know? yeah. The one that's like, well, spoken. I'm a college educated, yeah. but you know what? This is the job I found. But I'd rather, I'd rather be a pirate. Sure. <laughs> exactly. So that pirate's on this boat. Yeah, he's like, well, he's always quite punctual. I don't know why he wouldn't. The other pirate looks up and goes, punctual? What does that mean? Why he hasn't been stabbed before? Well, I mean, he has, but not lately. <laughs> he said, what? No, no, not punctured. Punctual. Ah, you dang college grad, you. I I can never understand what you're saying. Anyways, that's what you hear. Yeah, Bill's just kind of... If there's, like, a group of them, he's going to try to, like, slide into the back of them and just kind of, like... Yeah. Listen in to what they're saying, try to figure out who they're talking about. Okay. He doesn't see the captain, right? Correct. So he might be assuming that's who they're talking about. Right, right, yep. And uh, after a couple of, like, more whispers between them, you do catch somebody say, like, well, I don't know what to do if the captain's not here. Where are we supposed to... I mean, I know where we're going, so I guess we'll just keep... I don't know. Every uh, The first mate seems to be kind of, like, leading this charge, so he's the one talking. He's like, I don't know. I don't know where the captain is. I'm not going to go barging into his room and wake him up if that's if he's sleeping. And someone's like, well, what if he's dead? And they're like, oh, dead. Wait a minute. The tea. Mm, there must have been something sketchy about that tea. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll go check on the captain. And 
Uh, the rest of y'all head down to the kitchen and grab that tea maker because obviously he's up to something. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And they start getting like kind of up in arms. They're all getting their swords up. Yeah, let's get the tea maker. He poisoned the captain. Ah. Bill's going to be like, oh, there's, there was nothing wrong with that tea. And everybody, all of them all kind of turn to look at you. And they're all kind of glaring at you. And they're like, it's the new boy. And the, the first mate guy, he says, well, what do you know about the tea? Well, a couple things. First off, I know the old guy. He's my grandpa. So, like, I know he wouldn't poison anyone. And second, he gave me the same tea. Hmm. So, like, it, the tea's fine. Honestly, if I was to think of as a good guess, the tea's to help with sleep. Maybe he's just having a really good sleep. Uh, the, the well-spoken pirate up in the corner, he says, Well, I believe that he might just be in cahoots with the old man. <laughs> yeah, he's my grandpa. Not really cahoots, though. I mean, go check on him. He's probably asleep. And the first mate's like, All right, I... That sounds fair. All right, everybody wait right here. And they all watch as he, you know, because obviously the, the captain's got his room like, yeah, right up right by there. the... Yeah. the top of the deck, you know, kind of a, by the, the steering wheel. <laughs> I feel bad. Someone's going to be like, you idiot, that's not what it's called. I think it's just called a wheel. A but, wheel, yeah. yeah. So he ends up, uh, he, he knocks on the door, and there's no answer. And he tries the door, and it's locked, and he jiggles it a little bit. And he goes, ah, okay, one, two, three. And he just slams himself up against the door, and knocks it wide open, and he stands there for a second, he's like, Captain? Captain, are you all right? And all of a sudden, the captain comes walking out, pushes past him. He says, why did you break open my door? I was having the nicest rest I've had in quite a long time. And you come breaking in my door. You, you burst in here, making all kinds of noise, waking me up. <laughs> ah, what are you all doing standing around? Get to your jobs. You know where we're going. You know what you do. And everybody's just kind of like awkwardly with their, you know, mumbling and stuff. They just start to disperse and head off to their jobs. And the captain comes down. He's like, ah, well, I definitely won't be throwing that tea maker overboard. I tell you what, he's a stand-up guy. Made the best tea I've ever had. You there, boy. Uh, I, I, sir. Yes, ah. Well, uh, where's your grandpa? He's down in the kitchen. Ah, well, I'll have to go down there and thank him. Ah, uh, what are you up to right I now? mean, he'll probably make you a morning brew, too. Ah, yeah, that sounds good. Some I wonder though. if he does coffee. I, I, heard, I, he does everything. I bet he'll make a great one to wake you up, give you spirits for the day. Yeah, that sounds good to me. What are you doing, boy? What, uh, what, have they given you your mop and bucket yet? No, I was waiting for anything. Honestly. You there, Calcone, give him his mop and bucket. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, we could do the well-spoken bite. <laughs> ah, yes, Captain, I'll get to Miss Mop and Bucket right away. Follow me, child. And and the Captain, like, kind of goes walking off down towards the stairs to go, yeah. you assume, to talk to Mr. O'Gron. Uh, this new guy, Calcone, uh, he approaches you. He's a, he's a built man. Uh, but he's kind of Dorito shaped, where like you can tell he kind of skipped a lot of leg day, skipped but he does all a lot of leg days. He skips all the leg. He's got yeah. scrawny little legs, but he's got like big built arms. Uh, you know, if he was any more muscular, he probably wouldn't even stand on his legs. He'd just like walk around on his yeah, giant arms do a and fists. Uh, and he's he's bald. He kind of looks like one of those like early English like boxer Does he have guys. Have a giant mustache. Like yes, handlebar? he has a huge handlebar mustache. Nice. Yes, nice. so he looks just like in the posters those guys that yeah. used to do the yeah. boxing, you know, fisticuffs. Yeah. And he says, "Well, boy, it seems you joined our crew. Uh, what's?" Uh, he said, "Mop and bucket. Yeah, follow me." And he starts walking away with his big arms. And you find this little closet, and uh, he opens the door, and he just kind of shows you in, and he's like, "Well, uh, I can't get it." Because uh, my big shoulders. But if you want to go in there and get your mop and bucket... Couldn't you just turn sideways? Uh, I can try. And he turns sideways. He's like, oh, uh, 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 uh. And you hear like the sound of the, the frames around the door is like creaking as he's trying to fit himself in there. And he's like, I got it. Um, you ever put your hand in the cookie jar and you grab the cookie and you can't get your hand out. I feel like that's where we're at right now. Okay, oh. you can you can get back. I'll get him. I'll get All him. right. <laughs> I feel like I keep accidentally doing an accent. This is... Yeah, this guy, you know, he's a half pirate, half that's spoken. Right. And it just slips in. Between <laughs> exactly. And uh, so he, he lets go of the mop and he pulls his entire self out of this closet and uh, kind of looks a little embarrassed, I guess. 
<laughs> as you. Bill just kind of slides by him and grabs the okay. the bucket and mop. He says, uh, well, it usually takes about a day to start at one end of the deck and end up at the other end of the deck and uh, mop your way from there to there. So, uh, oh, breakfast. Yes, uh, that'll probably be ready here in about, oh, ten minutes. Okay. I just figured I'd follow the crew. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, well, what do I use for the water? Oh, yeah. See, all you do is you uh, take a rope and you tie it around the bucket. Yeah. Throw it overboard. Uh, don't lose the bucket. We lose a lot of buckets uh, throughout an entire journey. Got it. And uh, for different reasons, and uh, mop in the floor should not be one of them. Okay. Uh, and then you just pull it back up, and you dump the water on the ground, you just start swabbing. So I just use seawater? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can do that. All right. I mean, it's clean enough. You know, the salt really uh, helps to disinfect things. You're the professional here. I'm, yeah. There you go. Uh, if you do need soap, uh, which you usually don't, we've got some in the closet there. Uh, you shouldn't, it doesn't take a lot. Basically, just kind of wash your hands in the same water, and then it'll kind of set it up, and then you just go from there. Okay, I can do that. All right. Good to, good to hear, boy. Uh, if, if you need me, I'll be around. Oh, and the name's Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. I, uh, well, uh, like the captain said, my name's, uh, Carcone. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, glad to have you on board. You know, we're, uh, we're pretty rough, but, uh, I think all things considered, we're a pretty good gang of pirates. I'm gonna be the best pirate. Oh, lad, you, you little cheeky, cheeky lad, you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you later. I got my own work to do. <laughs> and Bill just... Don't lose that bucket! He yeah, says, Bill grabs the bucket, the mop, and then also some rope that's in there. And all right. heads up to the front of the boat, I guess. All right. And just gets to swabbing. All right. Uh, ten minutes later, you know, breakfast gets brought up. Mr. Okron is with the... Uh, cookie. The, yeah, Cookie, who you, you meet, who's a big burly guy. Uh, real rough and rowdy looking. Looks like he probably hasn't bathed in quite some time. Kind of smells like he hasn't bathed yeah. in quite some time. Um big old, you know, loppy chef's hat on his head, big old, like, gross-looking apron, like, he wipes his... Like, the apron has more food on it than Oh, on absolutely. Plate. Yep, yeah. exactly. And, uh, they just kind of serve things up, and I don't know if there's anything you needed to do during that, otherwise you just... I would just grab a quick bite of eat. Okay. Uh, if there was tea, he would not drink it. That's fair. If there's, there was water, he would drink there's water. There's water, and then there's obviously he some form grab of the alcohol. ale or, <laughs> or grog or something along those he lines. He would just but. grab the water. You can tell that, uh, just just something that you point out. Uh, a lot of people grab the grog, mm -hmm. and then uh, Mr. Okaron kind of like, you see him, he gets kind of pushy with the tea. He's like, no, just go ahead, take some, you know, try it, whatever. Um, and you actually notice that a lot of people, after they try the tea, they're like, oh, and they'll put their grog down and then go back for either a larger cup or like a, a second serving of the tea or whatever the case. So it's definitely a pretty popular choice. Okay. So um, otherwise, you get back to work. and then I have a feeling that... In this whole campaign, this whole C series, that uh, Bill might be the only person who will not like Mr. Okron's tea. It's very possible. <laughs> it's very possible. <laughs> I mean, at least everybody drinks tea, so it's like Mr. Okron can take their favorite tea and make it in yeah. such a way that's like. Oh. It's just, it's just funny that every single character we've met has enjoyed the tea. Yep. And then there's just Bill, one of the people who works there, who's yep. just like, I don't like it. Yeah, I got. <laughs> well, hey, that's you know the fun character. Trait, it's this trait one, it's an whatever. interesting character trait. Exactly. He's the only person in this whole universe that doesn't the like whole, his tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll take a water. Just a water. Yeah, just, I don't want me dip any leaves in that water. No, just water. Just water. Fresh water. Mmm, <laughs> water. That's right. So, uh, over the course of the day, you know, you see mostly just water as you're, you know, mopping. But as it gets later into the afternoon, you start to see land. And someone shouts out, you know, oh, island ho! And, uh, by the end of the night, you know, once you, once you pretty much finish swabbing the entire deck, uh, you guys eventually make landfall at this, this island that they've, uh, kind of called their base and just off into the distance you can just see the sight of land poking up over the waters uh which you assume is is the earth kingdom kind of where that all begins everybody kind of starts uh working to get off the ship they're mostly hauling stuff uh the captain comes up to you and he says good job boy i see that you made it all the way across the deck very impressive uh you can stash that back over into the uh 
the closet where you got it, and then uh, just grab a crate and start bringing it onto the island. We're gonna unload all this loot, and then we're gonna, you know, we'll restock whatever we need to as as necessary. Okay. So, are we at the island then? Yes. Oh, so we're now not parked, <laughs> but like anchors away. Yes. The dock yes. At the island. Yep. Okay. There's a there's a little dock that. It's kind of janky built, you know. You could tell the pirates themselves probably put it in uh, for their ship, but yeah, yep. Okay, so Bill is going to uh, when the captain walks away, right? Mm-hmm. He wants to look over the side of the boat. Is there land there? Like directly over the side of the boat? Yeah. Uh, well, so there's that like skinny dock that I was talking about, and okay. then that connects to the land. So yeah. So there is no land there, right? Not directly next to the boat, no. Okay. When Bill was in the the closet getting the mop and stuff, was there multiple mops or just this one? Uh, yeah, I'd say there'd maybe be maybe two or three mops. Okay. Um, is anyone off? Is there a side of the boat that no one's on? Like, is it's? Oh wait, yeah. So it's probably turned sideways. Yep. Yep. Okay. So yeah, most people would be getting off on the one. Like, so if the boat's facing this way. Most people are over on this side where the dock is next to it, and they're getting off. So this whole side of the boat over here probably doesn't have very many people on it, if any at all. Okay. Uh, Bill's just going to take all that in, and he's going to start walking back to the closet. Okay. And uh, when he gets to the closet, uh, he is going to shut the door behind him in the closet. Okay. And he's going to take the mop and set it down, turn it. And then take his foot, and he's going to snap off the end of it. Okay, okay. Um, the bow staff. He is making a makeshift bow staff, sure. which is his weapon yes. of choice. Awesome. Which he did not bring with him because it was at his house, and he you know, skipped that step to come sure. straight here, right? Well, he didn't think he'd need a weapon. Correct. He thought he was going to be fine, and they figured he'd get a, a new staff at sure. the... Because uh... like I said, in the way back in the, uh, the main story he said i said he never named it so it wasn't like close to him it was just he likes having a staff with him yeah but, like that one wasn't like his lifelong one it was no a new one he got sure uh anyways he breaks it he makes a makeshift bow staff and then he kind of just like tosses it on his back just yeah. kind of puts it he doesn't have a strap for it like he normally does so he can keep some back so what he does is he kind of just uh slides it <laughs> to his back I like through his shirt. Oh, okay. And then yeah. slides it also <laughs> to, down his pants as well that he's wearing. So then he's just got this giant stick that's just like all the way running from his sure. leg up to his back. Okay. So he's going to have to walk a little stiff legged, but he doesn't want anyone to know that he's got this. Right. Okay. That makes sense. And then he <laughs> peg leg walks because now he has a stiff leg that he can't bend. <laughs> and he's going to try and nonchalantly walk over to the rest of the crew to, um, get a, 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 a one of those packages sure, that he sure. talked about. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you're able to get over there, although be it uh, pretty awkwardly, yeah. and, you know, grab a box and then start kind of heading off. It's definitely very awkward getting off the ship on the ramp. Oh yeah, no, that's down. very hard. You're like, oh, Pirates, gosh, and they definitely probably are giving him weird looks. They are, they are. And uh, the one the one well-spoken pirate guy, Carl Coney, uh, he comes up to you and he says, oh, I say, boy, what uh what seems to be the problem with your leg? Oh. Your ligament. My leg, my ligament. Yeah, it's ligaments. My, oh, it's, it's stiff. It, I have not worked on a ship in a long time, and the waves and the movement, and I, this leg's just real sore. I kind of slipped with it earlier on some rope, and, you know. Ah, uh, you haven't. First haven't day of pirate life. Legs yet. Yeah, first yep. day of pirate life, and uh. you, you get stiff, you know, but. Uh. You know, all that swaying back and forth while you swab the deck. I, t- uh, I tell you what, it's, uh, it's it does a number on you. Some good sleep, and I'll probably be right as random. That's right. Maybe uh, maybe your grandpa can make you some nice tea. Oh, tea? I don't like sure. this stuff. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah. I know he makes a mean tea, I've heard. I just, uh, personally, I'm not a fan of tea, but... Well, I don't know, you're really hey, missing you, out, but uh, I guess more for us. Yeah, more for you, exactly. All right, fair enough. Well, uh, yeah, it'll, uh... You know, after a few days or so, I mean, you'll be back on land anyway, so yeah. I suppose it'll probably all wash away here soon. Yeah, well, if you don't mind, I'm going to go. This box is rather heavy. Oh, sorry, yes, of course. And yeah, Bill just kind of keeps 
hobbling his one leg forward down this <laughs> ramp. You really, you really pulling the the pirate look off. He really does well. look like a pirate because he looks like he's got an actual peg leg, yeah. a foot instead. But he, he's not bending his leg. He he's a third. He's peg. like tossing it in front of him yes. as he's walking. Um, so after you know a few goes or or so, uh, you eventually get all the boxes off the ship that they they're expecting to, and uh, you guys kind of head in, and you find that there's actually like a. I don't want to say like a whole village, but it definitely looks like maybe a small village had abandoned or mm-hmm. maybe the pirates had run them out. Who knows? Yeah. And so they've kind of taken over. So there's some actual like housing structures and stuff like that. And uh, what happens is a lot of the pirates, they, they start a big fire in the center of the little village. Uh, Mr. Okoron's out there. Uh, Cookie has like this giant, looks like a uh, some sort of a porky boar or something. Uh, over the spit okay, and he's yeah. just like roasting that up for everybody so a lot of people are you know playing some instruments or dancing around just kind of having a good time we made it to port we got some good loot wasn't as everything we expected yeah but you know we're here it's kind of a home coming home so uh there everybody seems to be in pretty good spirits for the most part the captain kind of just sits by and watches he's sitting over by the fire uh just kind of you know laughing he's having some drinks he's talking to a couple of the crew members things along those lines so okay um Bill's going to make his way to wherever... He's probably following someone ahead of him with a box, and he just follows him to wherever that is. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, they, they put all their boxes down. This is all after. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all the boxes are kind of... Set so aside. after he sets his box down, he's going to see if there's an opening for him to kind of, like, slide away into the shadows behind the buildings. Okay, okay. Sure, give me a... Give me a push your luck. Eight. 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 Um, okay, so... Basically, you you successfully are able to sneak behind one of the buildings, but as you do so, you can hear the captain uh, say something to the effect of, You are Mr. You there, Mr. Okran. Where's your boy, your uh, your grandson? So basically, you know that they might be looking for you to some extent uh, in the near future, but as as of the moment, you are out of sight. So they know I'm not there. To some extent. Like I said, I mean, you could uh, be in one of the buildings. It's going to take a while for them to look around the immediate, like, where we'd expect you. They might think I'm still on the ship still. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, it could be either of the things. Yeah, okay. Um, Well, when I sneak past the buildings, I wanted to look around. Okay. Just to get an idea of where it is. My goal is I'm looking for, like, a dinghy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, And also, from this island, can we see the mainland? So you can just barely see the mainland kind of peeking up in the distance. Um, You know where it was. You could see it from the ship pretty well. So um, you kind of look around. So for the most part, outside of this little village, let's call it, um, which is not too far from the docks, it's pretty well like jungled and things along those lines. Um, But you do eventually, I mean, you kind of make your way back over to the dock and you do notice that near the dock, they have a handful of of dinghies, Mm -hmm. you know, little rowboats or what have you uh, that are stationed there in the sand, kind of tied down, just, you know, really simple, just tied to like a a nearby tree or something like that. So they don't float away if the tide were to come in a little high. Bill's going to make his way over to those dinghies okay, and then just slide into one of them. He's going to just take out his bow staff and slide it into it. Okay. Just kind of just lay it down. Oh, okay. 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 And Sounds good. then he's just going to go back to the uh, pirate where everyone else is. Okay. So as you walk in, the, the pirate captain, he sees you and he says, Ah, boy, I was wondering where you are at. We were just looking for you. How was your first day on the crew? Oh, um, and he like grabs his back and he's like, I'm awfully stiff to be ah, honest. Ah, he's got his sea legs coming in, I see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's too bad that we came aboard or onto the shore because, uh, you know, usually if you stick around on the ship for a few days in a row, it makes it a lot easier to just fully transition in real quick, but uh, not much we can do unless you want to go sleep on the boat. <laughs> no, I'm fine out here. All right. Well, uh, anyways, we were just having some fun. Uh, no responsibilities too much in the morning. We're uh, planning on just resting up for the next day or so, and then we're going to take our spoils over on the schooner over to the mainland and we'll do some trade and I wasn't sure if you wanted to come along for that. Oh, that'd be cool, yeah. Yes, learn a little bit about what it is to sort of negotiate and uh, maybe intimidate some of the the businessmen over there into giving us some pretty good deals. 
Yeah, I mean, I want to learn everything on how to become a pirate. Ah, that's my boy. <laughs> well, all right. Well, you just uh, enjoy yourself. Have some uh, fun at the party. Enjoy some of the food. Uh, your grandpa's making tea, but I know that's not really your thing from what I've heard. Uh, so, you know, just uh, enjoy yourself, boy. You've uh, you've earned it. I'm pretty proud of getting you on to... For a, for a kid that we found on a passenger ship and kidnapped, I'm pretty impressed by how well you've taken to this. Uh, by the way, boy, where's your parents? Um... Dead? Ah, good! <laughs> Yeah, I'm perfect for a pirate. That's right. Ah, you have such a good spirit about it. You're almost freaking me out. You're so cool with it. Well, it happened a long time ago. Ah, well, I was living in an orphanage in the Fire Nation, and then I got sick of it, so I wanted to try something new, so I was going to the Earth Kingdom, and honestly, being a pirate is... Something new, I guess. Ah, well, we're, we're happy to have you. Like I said, I'm pretty impressed by how well you've transitioned into it. So, all right. Well, everybody, have your fun. Have your good times. And uh, we'll figure things out tomorrow morning. Now, did Mr. Okoron hear that conversation? Yes. Oh, okay. Anyways, yep. Uh, like I said, people kind of continue to party. Mr. Okoron just kind of sitting by a big old pot of tea. He's just keeping a stir in it, pouring it for people as they come by. You know, he seems really excited when somebody comes to get a little cup of tea mm-hmm. and things yeah. like that. So... Bill just kind of chills by the fire. Uh, by, uh, with Mr. Ogron or? Kind of near Mr. Ogron. Okay. Also near Cookie because he wants some of that fish. Not the tea, but the fish or whatever he was cooking. Over the yeah, uh, it was like a, it was like a, uh, like a wild boar yeah, kind of thing. What, yeah, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you absolutely can get first some that. pickings of that. Oh yeah, and, he just uh, like you, know, you watch him as he just like cuts off a big chunk and just starts handing chunks out to people and stuff like that. So and he's kind of just you know doing what Bill kind of does, where he kind of stays quiet and he just sits back and observes everyone. Sure. He's like taking in the moment, the music, the watching people coming to talk to Mister Oker and stuff. He's trying to kind of pick up more on Mister Oker on too. Oh okay. Just observing him. Uh, well, if there's because, anything. This is the guy who's claiming to be his grandpa. Right, right. probably should, you know, try and figure out more about him. Sure. Well, if there are any, like, specific questions that you want to ask, you can definitely do an assessment. Oh, situation. yeah, sure. Go for it. Watch, I'm going to fail this roll. <laughs> you, you went blind. Uh, no, uh, I actually rolled a 10. 10? Oh, wow. Okay, so on a 10+, plus, you get to ask two of the questions, and you also get a plus one ongoing uh, when acting on any of the answers for, you know, whatever that might entail. So these questions are a little weird for this situation because they're usually like if you're in trouble or right, something. Right, right. Yeah, feel free to kind of reword them based on whatever it is that you're kind of looking for. But I will say that these are kind of important because Bill is currently also, while he's in here and they're doing all this, he's scheming on how to, he's going to escape. Uh, he's trying to figure out how he's going to escape. And I think his biggest, his first one is, uh, who or what is his biggest threat? So, like, if at any moment he's planning on running with Mr. Okron, what do you think, what does he think will be his biggest threat to stop Sure, him? sure. Um, I would definitely say that if the crew were to find out too quickly, um, he would worry that, you know, given the time it's going to take for him and Mr. Okron to row to the, the shore... Once you get there, you're probably okay. You can probably find some way to either hide or get away. Yeah. But if you weren't able to row there fast enough before the crew figured out that you were gone, I mean, their ships are much faster, oh, whether yeah. it be one of their schooners that they use or whether it be, you know, the main ship, which you doubt they would probably use. Yeah. Um, well, when Bill heard the uh, the plan of them going to the mainland, they could bring <clears throat> Bill with them. Right. I was thinking that would be a better chance to, like, break away because they'll be in a city, you know, he can just hide between, like... You just run off and hide between buildings and alleyways and stuff, sure. and it'd be a lot easier for them to get away on yeah. in the city than row into the city. Sure, sure. Um, His biggest worry right now is Mr. Okara. Right. He knows he's young and nimble and can get away quickly, but he's not so sure about an old dude. Right. Like, how how quick, like, is he going to be a liability? Like, right. Like, how can he bring him along and stuff? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, what here can I use to escape? Okay. Um, so, obviously, you have the dinghy. 
uh, if you were to do it that way. Yeah. Uh, you know that they have a schooner, and you know that schooners, uh, by based on whatever amount of knowledge Bill might have about ships, he knows that you know it's a small uh, uh, sail vessel with sails, so it's a lot faster. It's a very, you know, yeah. comparatively to most things, it's a very speedy boat. Um, so that would be really useful. Um, let's see. Obviously, you've already kind of come up with the idea of you know just waiting until they take you along in the first place. Uh, let's see. What else could you use to escape? Um, it, you know, in the back of your mind, that if it came down to it, you could also, if you just needed to like lose them, or you know, maybe create some sort of a diversion or distraction. If you were to run into the woods, you wonder this island based on cleaning the deck while you were cleaning the deck on the way over here you kind of got a glimpse of a pretty decent amount of the island you know it's a fairly large island so it would take them quite a while on foot which you know is kind of almost like a weakness to to these pirates you know they're not on their ship they're not where they're experienced if they're just running around an island they might know the island pretty well maybe um but whatever the case you know if you could sneak into the woods and hide it would give them um it would take them a long time to to probably try to find you amidst the jungle yeah and then yeah I, I would say that's a pretty solid overview of the things that you could potentially use okay that's it so all right just sit there and take in everything sure sure um honestly some of these pirate guys are willing to party pretty much almost the whole night through uh i don't know how much you know you might hit a certain point mr ogron he hits a certain point for sure where you know he puts out the fire and he's like well the the tea here in the pot should be good for another maybe one to two hours so you know feel free to enjoy it uh until then fill your own cups Uh, i'm going to bed (laughs) bill would join him okay sounds good so bill kind of follows after him and he's like well bill uh we, what are you thinking as far as, you know, a possible escape? Well, there's two ideas. Okay. And I'm going to pitch both of them to you because, honestly, both ideas, they stem from you. Sure. The first idea is we're going to the shore tomorrow. Mm-hmm. At least I am. I'm not sure if you are. I'm not sure if you talked to the captain yet. But yes. He wants I... to bring me along to train me. Right, right. I did talk to him. Uh, he said he was a little bit concerned at my uh, motives and didn't really want to bring me along. He's worried I might try to to run off, I suppose. <laughs> maybe you could tell him you need some specialty ingredients? Well, maybe. Yeah, I might be able to. I mean, I bet that would work. That's true. That was one. But then while we're there, we just take off and leave. We're sure. on off, right? Hide in the city, find somewhere to building to hide in or something. Uh... My worry for that plan is I don't know how good you are at running Mm. and escaping and all that stuff. I like to think I make do, but uh, I mean, there's, I'm sure within the city there will be options. Maybe we can uh, see something. Sure, sure, yeah. Grab Uh, a cart or... uh, Yeah, I mean, I think I'd be strong enough to pull you in like a ripshaw or something. Maybe there's a way... I mean... I'm not usually one for theft, but if we're stealing from pirates, <laughs> I suppose that's a different I mean, matter. we're pirates right now, so I think, <laughs> I think we're allowed to steal Whoa. right now. I mean, I suppose that's a fair way to put it, uh, but I was thinking, you know, maybe if we could uh, maybe find some money while we're here that we could use to buy a, a horse and buggy or something along those lines, and then we could just ride right out of town, yeah. or even just a pair of... Uh, Man, I can't think of what they're called. Ostrich horses. Ostrich. Oh. Just says, I have money. So, <laughs> I don't know how much money that is. Oh, yeah, because he said he, he grabbed some money. I don't know, like 10 gold or something. Would that be enough to pay for a cart? I don't know if it'd be enough to buy one. Because I have money be... and I have a ticket, so I didn't use that money for the ticket. So Right. It might be enough to uh, hire somebody to take us somewhere. I don't know if it'll be enough to buy it, but maybe that's all we'll need. If we can get to like a nearby town or something like that. Yeah, and then we could just hide away there. Yeah, yeah. And figure out, you know, where to go next. The one sad thing, of course, is I don't think I'll be able to bring all these ingredients with me, but I suppose there's not much we can do about that. I mean, with the rate the pirates are going right now, these ingredients are going to go fast anyways. So yeah, if we stayed true. here, your ingredients wouldn't last long. No, you're right. You're right, Bill. Brings a tear to my eye, but it's replacing. Hey, at least they're enjoying it in the moment. Well, that's true. That is true. <laughs> yes. Well, uh... And the second plan... Uh-huh. You already seen Gung Ho for the first one, so you're probably not even going to like the second one. But if we're worried about getting caught in the city... 
We could wait until everyone's asleep and take a dinghy and row the boat for the shore. Tonight? Tonight. I already have a dinghy ready. Hmm. I mean, that's not a bad idea either. I mean, everyone's either drunk or asleep or both. Yeah. There might be a lookout, though, but I could knock him out. All right. If, uh... If that's the case, I mean, I could go load a couple of my crates onto it. Yeah. And, that uh, way you get some of your stuff. That's right. Um, I mean, I suppose it's tough. Well, I tell you what. Uh, hmm. I tell you what. If if they catch anyone, they'll be catching me. Yeah. And there's a chance that I might not be able to go to shore for the time being anyways. Yeah. But, I mean, you could still get out of here. Yeah. If, if you know, when they take you to shore. So, I mean, we could give this a try, and if it doesn't work, there's still hope for you to get out of here. Yeah. And then I can figure something out in the meantime, I suppose. Are you sure about that? Hmm. I, mean, I don't want you to be put in danger or something. I mean, they were just about to throw you overboard. Yeah, that's true. I guess how much do they like your tea and want to keep you around? That's true. I mean, at the very least, I feel like if they caught me trying to escape, they'd just make sure that I couldn't do that anymore. Yeah, they just chain you to a wall and make you keep making make tea. tea all the... <laughs> Is that what you want? It's like Michael Jordan yeah, in Space Jam. Yeah, you got Michael Jordan in <laughs> Space Jam, but with tea. Oh, well, uh, hmm. Making tea is my life dream, but I'm not sure if that's the conditions I'd want to do it in. <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you think, Bill? Should be... Again, my plan stems from you. Hmm. Because you're, I don't want to say the, uh, I don't know what the word would be for it, but basically you're the uh, liability in this case. Because either way, I know I could probably get away fine. Like, if I went into that boat by myself right now, I don't think they would catch me missing. I know I'm strong enough I could get away, right? Or if I waited till morning, you know, that's probably what I would do without you. You know, Mm -hmm. I would wait till morning and just take off in the city. I know I'm fast. I know I'm quick. I know I've got, you know, street smarts. Sure. I could get away. It's just you. Hmm. And the thing is, I'm not trying to, like, be mean and say you're you're like no I understand. i'm just saying i know you're older and i know i have to we have to work around that no I but understand. the last thing i want to do is like abandon you oh you no know? because well, you helped that. me back on the bow and now, now i want to help you on this bow sure well let me ask you this bill how how confident do you think you could take out a lookout oh easy oh i i have a how would you say? I've been training with bow staffs my whole life, and I've made myself a bow staff, and it's I can get it anytime I want. Mm, all right. Well, I, I may just be an old man, and uh, I, I understand that. But I want to make sure that you have a chance, for sure, at getting out of this. Uh, pirates are no place for, for a kid. Or an adult, for that, for that matter. But... I'm gonna help. I'm gonna well, let's let's try the dinghy, and if it doesn't work out, there's still an option for you. You'll take the fall. Sure, of course. Are you are you sure? Yes, I'm sure I'll figure something out afterwards. All right. Well, you get your crates. I will. All right. I'm gonna go knock out a lookout. All right. Sounds good. I'll start loading up my stuff, and then uh, yep, just meet me at the dinghy when you're ready. And with that, you two split up in in the dark of the jungle. Okay. So Bill's goal right now is he wants to find, he wants to get to that dinghy. Sure. And uh, he wants to get to that dinghy and get his bow staff. Okay. But also looking for the lookout. Because he figures there will be a lookout. Yeah. Maybe one or two. And he wants to find the lookout that would be on that side near the boat. Probably would even be on the boat if this, if Bill's thinking like that. He doesn't really know pirates and how they do it. But sure. he figures there would be one on the boat. And since the boat's near those dinghies, he would, you know, have to get to that boat. Somewhere. Right. Yep. And, and you're 100% right. So you run back to the dinghy. You get your bow staff. You you hurry over to kind of the main section of the, the little dock. And on the deck of the ship, you see there's a pirate. He's, you know, kind of eh, slowly, you know, drinking his way. It's it's the well-spoken pirate. Why not? Oh, he's my fun. word. <laughs> yeah. Of course it has to be him. He's up, kind of like hanging off the side of the deck with his legs kind of dangling there, sitting there. Uh, he's having an occasional sip from his uh, his bottle of grog or whatever the case. Uh, just kind of keeping an eye over the dock, keeping an eye over the waters and stuff. And uh, you see at the moment... Uh, he, he seems to be shouting back and forth between Mr. Okaron. Mr. Okaron's standing there with, uh, so a lot of the crates are kind of stacked up right there by the, the 
dock right yeah, yeah. so off the sand off the beach but you know not too far from the ship because they just kind of wanted to get it off and and have just leave fun. it there right yeah. so they can then move exactly. the schooner in the place and yeah 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 and so you know mr okran's standing there and the guy's like what do you think you're doing and he says oh well i'm just uh, moving some of these crates around to a different position uh don't mind me you go back to whatever it is that you're doing he says oh ah what the hell <laughs> Oh, that's not even the voice. That's, oh, what the that's hell? That's his drunk voice. That's right. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're not taking a ship, I don't really care. And he's like, all right, well, you have a wonderful night. And he's like, I I will. And uh, Mr. Okran, you know, like I said, you just see him take his, uh, his crates and start moving them over towards the area with the dinghy. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of looking back like, oh boy, this is a little bit awkward. So he just kind of like starts moving. So he, he's more just reorganizing these boxes so that his stuff is in its own pile. So he can quickly just start like grabbing them and loading them on. Yeah. Uh, but he's not entirely sure what he's going to do because this guy is kind of. So like, he's just kind of getting them ready, but he's not moving. Them. Right, yeah. right. Because it would look really suspicious if he started throwing them into the. Dinghy. Okay. Uh, is he the only lookout Bill can see? There's yes. none on the land, just this one. On right, right. Okay. And of course it's Calcone. Um, <laughs> Calcone. Uh, He's Bill is going to start hobbling up the, the to the right, hill right, because he's now stashed his bow staff back into his oh, clothes. Yeah. and so he's now hobbling he's doing this the way. pirate wobble. Hey, thankfully, this is the one guy he already had this cover That's for, right. so he can do get away with it. And, and he uh, starts hobbling up to the boat. Cal Cody sees it and he says, Oh my gosh, boy, back again with those sea legs. What are, what are you doing here? Well, I was talking to the captain, right? Uh huh, and he he asked me how i was doing day one right and oh, i told him i was rather stiff right from oh, the sea I legs so, that, yeah. and he said a pirate usually gets over their sea legs quick if they don't get off the boat that means oh. they're always on it they're sleeping for like uh-huh. the first few days i'm sure that happened with you right oh uh, yeah so he's so i was thinking about that and i was like you know what it'd probably be better if i slept on the boat than out there sure it's probably going to be rougher than like the nice beds on the the land but like at least I'd be on the water, and then my sea legs would come in faster, you know? So I'm well, going to sleep can, on the boat. I can dig the initiative. I've got no problem with it. I'll be on this boat myself, in fact. Um, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, and Bill's just going to kind of walk past him, okay. and he's going to make his way over to the uh, the closet. Okay. And he's going to go, hey, Cal, come here. Oh, yeah, what is it? Oh, oh, so wait, I forgot to say, before he did that, he's going to, like, take out his bow staff and, like, hide it around the corner. Oh, okay. So Cal can't see it, but he can quickly grab it. Sure, sure. All right, so, uh, yeah, Cal comes hobbling over to you. He's not, like, super drunk, but you can tell that, you know, every once in a while he steps, he looks a little bit like... A slight oh, sway. Da, 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 da. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> a slight sway. And he says, oh, I say, boy, what is it that uh, you need? Well, look at this. And Bill points into the closet and he's pointing at the broken mop head that's just laying there. Oh, I said, don't lose the buckets. And here we are. We got a broken mop. That's that's a good thing we got three. (laughs) And when Bill sees him leaning down to like look at it and stuff, he's going to grab the bow staff around the corner. Okay. And he like stands back up. Bill's just going to take a giant crack at the back of his head to knock him out. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. So we're jumping into a... Uh... Is this combat or would this be like more like rely on my skills and training? Just mm, because mm, it's mm, not mm. technically a combat yet. Now, if Bill fails... That's then, true. Then that's probably true. be combat. Yeah, so. no, I, I'd say that's a fair point. Yeah, let's let's try to rely on your skills and training. See if you can really knock him in the head with your with your bow staff. I mean, I've practiced. Sure. So let's see if my... Okay, well, I just rolled a natural 12. So... Oh, oh, oh. you whack it right over the head. It's a mix of between his drunkenness... And hit, I mean, the, the direct hit right onto the back of his balding, you know, noggin. Mm-hmm. He goes, Whoosh. oh my. And he just, <laughs> and he, he falls in, but it's so awkward. Cause like I said before, like his, his body. body is just massive or his upper body is, I guess. So he's kind of like awkwardly stuck, like kind of wedged into okay. the door. So, but he's unconscious. So, so when Bill saw it was Calcone. Yeah. He really realized that he needed to, like, if after he knocks him up, he's got to, like, tie him up and trap him and stuff. And he realized, this guy couldn't get into the closet. So if I got him into the closet, sure. knocked out, 
How would he get out? Yeah, I suppose that's a fair point. But, I mean, like I said, he's kind of jammed into the doorway. So he's going to just kind of go up behind him and just, just kick push, him forward push, and just like, push with his foot. <laughs> and just try to get this guy I mean, right through the doorway. I think over over the t- <laughs> over some time, you're finally able to get him jammed into this little closet. And you can tell that when he wakes up, he is going to have so many like kinks in just every part of himself. <laughs> it's gonna hurt so bad he's gonna have so many bruises partially because you you had to kick him yeah, in and probably the dog and he's gonna have a massive like one big of old those cartoonish bumps on the back of his head concussion <laughs> and this guy's not in a good spot right uh bill <laughs> once he's fully in he's gonna like push his legs in, which is not gonna be as hard because those legs are tight right the legs are tight he's those gonna push easy. those legs in <laughs> so he's fully in it so he's not gonna jam anything in the door he doesn't want to hurt him right more than he has um and then he's gonna grab the uh the uh, the mop head that he broke off, and he's just gonna set it on top of his bald head <laughs> yeah. to give him like hair. He's got like white dreadlocks now. Yeah, he's got white dreadlocks. <laughs> and Bill kind of just does like a slight smile, and it's like, <laughs> "Sorry, bud, but I had to knock out someone." And he you just, just hear, shuts the door. <laughs> All right. He thought about tying him up, but then he was like, "This guy's so, so hard to get into this that he's right. probably." If he does wake up, he's probably going to be stuck in here anyway. So <laughs> They're going to have to cut him out yeah, probably. somehow. Probably, yeah. They have to, oh, like, two guys grabbing legs and pulling. Poor Calcone. Uh, and, so, and then Bill grabs his bow. Well, he still has it, but he uh, yeah. just shuts the door and takes off down the... Uh, All right. Sounds good. So, yeah, you get off the ship and you run down and Mr. Okron is like... Oh, oh clear. Oh. <gasps> Great. And Mr. Okran comes out, and I'd say between the two of you, you yeah, guys quickly start... load it up onto the dinghy. And then Bill, he, Mr. Okran hops in, Bill unties yep. the rope, and then he like starts, he gets in the water and just starts shoving it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it takes a little bit. Obviously, it's a, it's a bit weighed down now with the with the ingredients, but sure enough, you get it onto the water and you guys start rowing. Yeah. Rowing and rowing and rowing. And you're getting tired, but you're rowing and rowing. And then, um, honestly with nobody uh i mean everybody's either like i said asleep or partying or drunk or whatever the case like i mean or in a closet or in a closet (laughs) that's right i mean there's nobody to really come after you guys uh you know in the back of my mind when i wrote this i kind of thought to myself how cool it would be to have a ship chase we can save that for another day i guess so because all things considered you guys took care of pretty much all your bases and uh you you row up to the shore by early morning uh to the shores of this uh little earth kingdom city uh where you can tell that it's kind of especially the the area where you row up and your dinghy seems like a pretty rough and rowdy kind of space obviously because they've been trading with pirates and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. but otherwise you guys get there and uh within the next couple of hours you're able to find somebody who's willing to uh give you the next city over take us to the next city and and then from there you guys can make your way over to to gao ling Okay, so and then we give a a little a tip to the one guy to sure. be like, hey, we well, you didn't see us this morning." That's right. That's right. Yeah. And he's like, "Ah, uh, I was just hauling supplies." There you go. Then. Which wouldn't even be a lie because you guys put a lot of supplies yeah, in there. <laughs> we appreciate it. Well, all right. Well, you guys have fun. And I guess we go on our way to Gaoling then. All right. Sounds Hopping good. cart to cart, I guess. Cart to cart or even, well, I guess you guys can't really go on foot because you got a bunch of ingredients. Yeah. But um, I'm sure there'd be a few times, you know, on your journey where you guys stop and you'll throw together a little pop-up shop or something. And Mr. Ocaron will make some tea with some of the ingredients. So it gets a little bit easier as time goes on to get where you're going. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, you make some money from the pop-up shop. You use it to pay for the, you know, the next, the next cart. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and then eventually you guys make it there. And uh, he already has a building all picked out that he's he's uh, already discussed with somebody probably by mail or by messenger hawk or something like that. You know, yeah. so um, you guys are about pretty much ready to get moved in. And uh, actually what he does is uh, he leaves you there to kind of get things all set up and things. He That's has to go and, and run out a couple other errands. Okay. Uh, to to kind of procure more ingredients mm-hmm. and get some more supplies and things like that. Yeah. All of which will work into how he meets some of the other members of uh, the Blissful Brew's crew. So while I'm setting up for the Blissful Brew and getting everything ready, clean, I'm guessing the building is a little abandoned yeah. kind of thing. So yeah. Bill basically just took it upon himself to like fix everything. And sure. I'm sure Mr. Okron left him some money. 
sure, yeah. to buy supplies to fix everything. Oh, absolutely. So in these, it could be months. I, I think we said like Bill was there for a year before other other people showed up. Definitely before everybody showed up. Yeah, he was sure. like a year. So in this year, Bill just basically turned the Blissful Brew into like the nicest establishment yeah. he could. Awesome. And then I guess. Do all three characters come at once, or uh, so the order of which they would have come and joined Bill in getting this place ready? So obviously we would have started off with Bill. Uh, next, it would have been if it was Brock, that would have been great. It would Gu- have been a very helpful well, hand to help out. I with. think Guo would have come pretty. Okay. Hey, he would have helped with like after. decoration. That's right. That's right. Brock would have come third, and then Mika would have been the final. And would she have come like probably when we were finished with it? And probably, yeah. She pretty much just kind of joined as like part of the staff right off the, you know, right working we right off opening. when she got out. Yep, okay. yep. So, okay. So yeah. I guess Bill would know Brock and Guahan more than Mika. A bit, which, yeah, quite a bit. Which would make sense because Brock, Guahan, and Brock both are more open about their past yeah. than everyone else, but Mika's more closed off, which yeah, would make sense much. because she's the newest of the group. That's so. right. And then yep. there's Bill, who's the oldest in the group, and is still probably the most closed off. <laughs> yeah, that's anyone. right. So yeah, he talks about you know current things and stuff. Yeah, not so much like here's my whole past and my backstory yeah. and where I came from. So. The players do know that he's from the Fire Nation, and he was the first one to meet Mister Okaron, right? Yep. But that's all they know about him. Exactly. And for some reason, I don't think any of them have questioned his name, unlike Mr. Okron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, like oh, he's like, like, Bill Dor. You know, so there's a guy named Brock Lee in our group. So That's I right. Mean, like, Bill Dor is nothing compared to that. We, nobody knows how to pronounce Guo. 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 So, yeah. Awesome. There it is. We got it. Bill's prequel. There's Bill's prequel. Thank you everyone for listening to our first prequel episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And before you go, I want to say a massive thank you to all the following voice casts that we procured for this episode and how you can find and support their amazing talent online. All of these people are all accessible on Casting Call Club, which is an amazing network of independent voice actors and other talents available to anyone looking to get into the entertainment industry or those looking for talent for their productions. Here's our cast list. Wang Long is played by Hito Shura. Jasper Burtney by Chaz Ravenel. Margaret Burtney by Yuma Fusion. The Ship Captain by Festive VA. And Blaze Burtney was voiced by FM Voice Acting. You can find all of their credits and links to their profiles on Casting Call Club in the description below. So please make sure to check that out and support them because they did an amazing job. Of course, Bill Dorr was voiced by Cameron Hoganike, as per the usual, and all other vocal parts were supplied by myself, Skylar. Next time, we're going to be sitting down and listening to a particularly spooky prequel episode in light of the upcoming Halloween 2022. What's that spooky prequel, you might ask? That's right, it's Wohan's mysterious backstory as he travels along with a crazy cast of characters in his traveling circus. So be sure to tune in next week for that. See you all next time. Thank you so much for listening to our show. Of course, don't forget to follow or subscribe to our podcast through whatever podcast site that you're using, such as iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and others. Additionally, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Just look for the social media icons. Following us on social media gives you access to all news, announcements, and of course new episodes as they are released. You can check out our website, bendersandbrews.com, which will feature all of our episodes as well as news, announcements, and even cool character and player profiles. It's a great hub of information for the Benders and Brews podcast. And finally, we would be truly humbled if you would be willing to take the time to leave us a review if your podcast site allows you to do so, such as on iTunes. Or, in the case of YouTube, you can hit the like and subscribe button and drop us a comment. Tell us about what you thought about our podcast episodes. It sure would mean a lot to us. Avatar Legends is a tabletop role-playing game created by Magpie Games. Nickelodeon, Avatar, and all related titles, logos, and characters are trademarks of Viacom International Inc., all rights reserved. I also want to thank the following artists who you can find on Fiverr for their amazing creative work on this podcast. Character art was done by Alicio Papadraw. Background art by Kenichi. Music by Joe Tims 215. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>